This is the third section of chapter 10 on forces and motion. And this is forces and acceleration. Okay, well, Isaac Newton contributed a lot to mechanics and we have certain laws that we use. And Newton's second law states this, that the force needed to accelerate a particle of mass m is equal to this force equals the product of mass and acceleration which we shorten to f equals ma f for force m for mass and a for acceleration we'll be using a lot of this in questions so f equals ma the force needed to accelerate a particle of mass m is force equals mass times acceleration now we can shorten this and just write N2L to stand for Newton's second law, F equals MA. Now, when we started off doing force diagrams, on a force diagram, let's say we've got some sort of mass like this, I put W to stand for weight. Okay, now weight, is a force measured in newtons force in newtons but sometimes in questions we're not given the weight we are given the mass of the object so we're given this mass and we need to work out the force so what acceleration do we use well we use the acceleration due to gravity so if i want to work out this weight here the weight of this object in newtons that's like a force so that matches up with this so weight equals the mass of the object times the acceleration the acceleration will be the acceleration due to gravity acceleration due to gravity so sometimes we're given weight sometimes we're given mass Sometimes we need to convert between the two. If we do have the weight, which I'll just call W, that will equal the mass of the object, which I'll call M, times by the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. So you could say mass times by 9.8 equals weight. Or weight divided by 9.8 equals mass. Now, because we use uh, acceleration due to gravity uh, a lot in questions, it may be easier actually just to represent that 9.8 with the letter G. And it is allowed to give our answer in terms of G, like pi, how you give an answer in terms of pi. So we could also write this as W equals MG. Yeah, so you are allowed to give answers in terms of G or replace 9.8 with G and use G in your working until you get to the end or leave an answer with G. That way you don't need to worry about rounding to two significant figures. So where you see G, you know that represents the acceleration to the gravity 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, this question here says find the acceleration of a particle of mass 1.5 kg acted on by a resultant force of 6 newtons. So resultant force, a leftover force. So let's go to Newton's second law, which is force equals mass times by acceleration. What do we have here? We have a force of 6. We have a mass of 
and we are trying to find a. So all we need to do is say a equals six divided by 1.5 and we get a result of four. So the acceleration is four meters per second squared. Okay, in each of these diagrams, the body is accelerating as shown. So you can see that's accelerating that way, that's accelerating that way. Find the magnitude of the unknown forces X and Y. So looking at the first diagram, it is not accelerating in this direction vertically, which means that these forces are balanced. These forces are unbalanced because it is accelerating this way. And this is the bigger force because that's the direction of acceleration, whereas this trying to stop it from moving. So let's start, first of all, in part A by looking at what's going on horizontally. So I'll do a little arrow like that to show I'm looking at the horizontal forces. Since it's accelerating in this direction, X must be the bigger force. I need to take away the four to find the resultant force. So X minus four is the resultant force and that equals the mass two times by the acceleration two. So what we have is X minus four, the resultant force equals four which means that x must equal four plus four, eight newtons. So we found the value of x. Now let's find the value of y, and we're gonna do that by looking at the forces going in the vertical direction here. Now this isn't accelerating this way. So these forces are balanced. Y is equal to two G, there is no resultant force. Now there's two ways you could write it. You could say, well, y, minus 2g equals zero to show that there's no resultant force or you could say the forces are balanced y equals 2g it doesn't matter because either way you're going to get the same equation y equals 2g so i could write y equals 2g like that leave my answer in terms of g or i can actually work out two times by g 9.8 and get 19.6 Newtons. So you could leave your answer in terms of G, or you could write the answer as 19.6. Let's move on to part B and work out what um, is going on here. So can you see it's accelerating to the left? So 80 minus X will give me the resultant force. 80 has got to be bigger because that's the direction it's moving in. So 80 minus X, that's the resultant force, equals the mass times the acceleration. So that's going to be the mass of four acceleration of two. So 80 minus X equals eight. So we can rearrange that to say X is equal to um, 80 minus eight. So X equals 72 Newtons. So that's the value of X for it to be accelerating that way. And then for the forces which are going vertically like this, I suppose I should put an arrow to show it's going horizontally here. In the vertical direction, there's no acceleration. So the forces up and down must be balanced. So what force do we have going up? Y. What forces do we have going down? Well, 20 going down here and 4G. Those are balanced in that direction. Or you could write Y minus 20 minus 4G equals zero to show that the forces are balanced and there is no resultant force here. You could write this instead. Y minus 20 minus 4G equals zero it doesn't really matter this shows that they're balanced anyway so all we need to do is to find y i suppose we could leave it like this in terms of uh, g but we could actually work that out, couldn't we so that's going to be 20 plus 4 times by 9.8 which is 39.2 39.2 so y is going to equal to 59 
value of y. Now notice on these questions, um, I've used the value of g, 9.82 significant figures. I've given my answers to three significant figures. That's fine. You are allowed to do that. So I could round this to two significant figures and write 60, this to two significant figures and write 20, but two or three significant figures is allowed, but not any more than that. OK, so we've got a body of mass 5 kgs pulled along a rough horizontal table by a horizontal force of magnitude 20. So this is where we want a diagram. So let's draw our rough horizontal table and a body of mass 5 kg. So I'm just going to draw that in like that. Being pulled along a rough horizontal table by a force of magnitude 20. So let's have that pulling this way. 20 newtons with a constant frictional force of four newtons. So let's put the friction going that way. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Ah, so let's put on, it's going to be a normal reaction here. Anything that's on a uh, surface is going to have a normal reaction perpendicular to the plane that it's on. And then this way, we're going to have the weight of the object. Now the weight is not five. The weight is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So it's going to be five times 9.8. So the weight of this is going to be 49 newtons. So you've got 49 newtons going down that way. And part A says work out the acceleration of the body. Now this is going to be accelerating to the right on my diagram. So the acceleration is going to be equal to the resultant force. So let's write that down first. Resultant force. And that's going to be 20 minus 4. So 16 newtons is the resultant force. And that resultant force, 16, is equal to the mass times the acceleration, which is A. F equals MA. So that means A equals 16 over 5. So that will be 3.2 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration. Resultant force is equal to mass times the acceleration, part B. Right, the distance traveled by the body in the first four seconds. Now, as soon as we see distance, traveled by something, the initial velocity, the final velocity, the time taken, it's SUVAT. Always. And actually, uh, what we've done here is we've linked SUVAT to F equals MA. We found the um, acceleration. So like maybe like a little diagram like this might be useful. F equals MA and F equals MA gives you the A of SUVAT. So the acceleration, 3.2. The distance traveled, so we want to find S. So that's going to be uh, what we want to find. T is 4. Now, what else do we need? Ah, it's tucked away in this part of the question, initially at rest. If you're not looking out for it, you may miss it, which means that u is zero so we want our suvat equation that has s u a and t and that's going to be s equals u t plus half a t squared so s is zero times by t plus half times by acceleration which we've worked out 3.2 times by t squared, which is 16, or 4 squared, let's write that. So I should be able to just type this in, work it out. So half times by 3.2 times by 4 squared, and I get 128 over 5, or 25.6, and that's going to be meters. So three significant figures here is fine, or I could round it to 26 meters, two significant figures, but three significant figures there is fine. Then the last bit of this question, part C, 
the magnitude or the size of the normal reaction between the body and the table. Well, this isn't accelerating vertically. So R is equal to the weight. R, the normal reaction, is equal to W. R is equal to that 5 times by 9.8, which we worked out. So the normal reaction is 49 newtons, but we'd already worked that out from before anyway. You should now be able to do exercise 10C on pages 164 to 166. So we have been looking at Newton's second law, which tells us that the resultant force acting on an object is equal to mass times acceleration. So F is that resultant force. And remember, if we've got some sort of object uh, moving, and let's say it's accelerating in this direction, and we've got some sort of pulling force here, and we've got some sort of force here, then the resultant force is going to be P minus F equals the mass of this object, MA. And uh, quite often on these questions, if there aren't any other forces, we've just got the normal reaction and the weight here, we could say that R equals the weight of the object if there aren't any other forces and that weight is equal to the mass times by the acceleration due to gravity so you could say r equals mg if there are spell this right if there are no other uh, forces vertically in this case it's vertical